Saturday, July 7th. Saturday, July 7th. It's the first annual Sonetta TV Awards. I'm Symphony Space, 2537 Broadway, upper level at the Symphony Space, 2537 Broadway, upper level in New York, New York. Find us on usalivestream.com slash Sarnetta TV Awards. USA Livestream at S-A-N-E-T-E-R TV. Black Power. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Let's give them another round of applause. Let's give another, let's give another well-rounded applause for In Vogue. Free your mind. Come on. Come on, everybody. Free your mind, everybody. All right, all right. Thank you, everybody. Okay, I'm here to bring up the next uh, set of nominees for the category. Oh, once again, for those of you who are late, this is the 2018 first annual Sonata TV Awards. Yes, let's give yourselves a hand. Yes, yes. Black power, black power, black power. Thank you again, Invo. Free your mind. Black power, people, black power. All right, all right. Yes, yes, sir, yes, sir. Black power, black power. That's right. Come on now, y'all. Let's give it up. Let's give it up. Peace out to Sanada. Sanada TV Awards 2018. The next set, I'm so honored. I'm so honored to give the next set of nominees and it's for the Best Slave Rebellion in History Award. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the nominees, and the nominees are Gabriel Prosser. Yes, give him a hand. Good, good old Gabe, good old Gabe. Yes, Brother Prosser, mm-hmm. Uh, I hope I get this right. Y'all know my English is all messed up. Toussaint Levisure. Did I say that right? All right, all right. And of course, nominee number three, Nat Turner. Woo! Give it for Nat. Nat Turner. Yes, yes. And two honorable mentions, the Slave Revolt of Stono Rebellion, 1739. And of course, the New York Conspiracy of 1741. Let's give a hand for all our nominees. You are watching the 2018 Sonata TV Awards. And uh, this is so great. Wonderful, wonderful, man. This is wonderful. And uh, you heard the nominees. And let me see here. And the, this, the 2018 first annual Sonata TV Awards uh, award goes to wow <laughs> y'all guessed it brother Nat Turner Nat Turner come on up here Nat Turner yes Nat Turner Nat Turner come on up here <clears throat> wow it's wow it's it's great it's, it's I am. I am overwhelmed with this honor. Uh, I would like to thank In Vogue for their performance of Free Your Mind because surely it took a free mind for me to be able to pull off one of the greatest slave rebellions in history. I, uh, it's, it's, it's incredible, incredible. I never thought that in my lifetime I would really actually be here to accept this wonderful award by Sonetta TV and all you wonderful black power conscious African wonderful loving type people out there. I never thought that I would be here to win such an award. I think, I first of all, I want to thank my Holy Father. I was inspired by God and this wonderful book here in order to pull off one of the greatest slave rebellions in history. I want to thank the Sarnetta TV Academy for nominating me in this is such an, an honor. I want to thank everybody here for such notoriety and the cameras and the, the adulation. I thank again over and over my 
Heavenly Father. May I read a passage? I'll, I'll skip that for the time being. I'll skip that. This is a wonderful, 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 wonderful honor. Mind you, I only have a few minutes with you people. I'm scheduled to be executed, and my body will be dismembered by the Caucasian people that actually hated me. Um, so, I, so I, do any of y'all want to attend that also? I just was wondering. I just, well, oh, I want to thank, thank my Holy Father. I want to thank Sonata TV. I want to thank all of you who participated in this wonderful entertaining event. And surely a slave rebellion is most entertaining. You can ask the white folks that we cut up. <laughs> it was a cut up for them. <laughs> so <laughs> I think I think I think I want to thank the slaves that revolted with me. If it was not with you having my back, I could not be here accepting this wonderful honor. With that said again, thanks to another TV. Thanks, time, and uh, we can go in the back here. Y'all can watch these crackers execute me in just a few minutes. Thank you, everybody, and maybe I will be here next year for another wonderful Sonata TV Award. Thank you. I love all of you. I love all of you. Thank God. I thank all of you. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> now, see, do you see, do you see how silly the Sarnetta TV Black Power, Black Power War Sarnetta TV. Don't y'all see how silly that is? And don't you know, and what makes it so bad, y'all haven't done nothing close to Nat Turner. Nothing to Dr. King, nothing to nobody. Everybody that's participating in these awards have done nothing compared to the nominees, to these type of persons, our ancestors, nothing. It's all entertainment. You should really feel shame. You should really feel disgust in yourself because that's exactly how you're looking at in the eyes of the world. I want to speak. Can I do that? Because I'm not just speaking for myself. I want to speak for our ancestors. How can you do that? You can't represent them. Well, Perhaps not. I might not qualify. But I want to bring a complaint. I want to bring something to us that we should think about. That I think they would agree with me. Because sometimes you become wiser and smarter after the fact. They may agree with you if they were here. But as we grow older and we begin to look at things in a more, uh, uh, we examine things more and we look more deeper into things. What we did when we was 21, we probably wouldn't do at 31 or 41 or 51. I want to talk about <laughs> people, a lot of folks, I, I will, I unsubscribe from you. You are too negative. You are too negative, Angel Snub Number Seven. You 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 look you you look like you sincere, and you and you might be a, a all right guy, but you too negative. Why am I negative? I am negative because mm, I am negative because I refuse to accept our fantasy world. I refuse to allow you to just feel good, and that's what you want. You want somebody to make you feel good. You want somebody to make you happy. There's nothing happy about our lives. Yesterday or today, there's nothing happy about this. If you want it happy, then you got to make it happy, but you don't want to do that. You want to pretend that you're happy. As you know, some of you may know, I got a little crush on an in vogue sister. But see, Looking at a picture might make me happy. Listen to her sing might make me happy. But what really would make me happy is to have a wedding ring on her finger 
and I can wake up in the morning with her by my side. That's the reality. But it cannot happen unless I take action to make it a reality. Otherwise, at least I got to try. You don't even want to try. You want to pretend that you're doing something. So listening to videos all day long, it makes you feel good. You can pretend because in reality, you're not doing a damn thing to liberate yourself from an enemy. You just want to feel good. So my topic that I've chosen for these last few minutes, I want to talk about these Sonetta Awards. And in my opinion, nothing but some more feel good that don't benefit nobody except Sonata and all those involved who's cashing the checks. Oh, see, there you go with that negativity. What's wrong with the Sonata Awards? Oh, it's, it, it gets worse. It gets worse. Because I want to talk about Brother Minister Farrakhan, who is now releasing a music album. It gets worse. Oh, man. Here, here he goes. He's really... See, that's why nobody can't work with this guy. That's why nobody listens to this guy. I take offense. And it's a disrespect to me. Our ancestors. To put this struggle. Into a category. To make it look like it's some type of form of entertainment. So you mean to tell me if Malcolm or Elijah Muhammad, or Dr. King, or Marcus Garvey, and all our brothers and sisters who fought in this struggle, if they were alive today, you would be honoring them with this award crap. There was no awards for black power, black struggle, soul power, during the time of Malcolm, or Martin, or Marcus Garvey. They didn't have time for that. It was serious business. There's nothing entertaining about somebody putting a rope around your neck and lynching you. There's nothing entertaining about somebody shooting your husband in the face and raping your mama in front of your eyes. That's the type of thing that we have had to deal with for hundreds of years. You want to give an award to those who struggle. They did not see. That's you you diminishing our struggle by putting it into the category of entertainment. Black liberation is not entertainment. I take offense. When I was locked up and I got myself free, I don't want an award because I was able to get myself up out of that situation. Because nothing was entertaining about it for me. It's not it's not on that level. Don't demean my struggle because I caught hell. Malcolm took a bullet in the chest. Martin took a bullet in the neck. What's entertaining? I'm going to give you a, a reward, a award. And I, I wonder, Minister Farrakhan, I want to talk to you, brother. Come on now. I want to talk to y'all who listen to Brother Farrakhan. Look at this. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad in the very beginning. Listen. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad asked Brother Farrakhan. He was a musician. He was a Calypso singer. He was making a living, making music. He was an entertainer. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad asked his followers, if you want to follow me, you got to let that entertainment stuff go. Why? Because entertainment ain't nothing but buck shuffling. It also takes away from your mentality you need to look at your struggle in a serious manner. It takes away from that. This is why the Honorable Elijah Muhammad asked his followers, you cannot be entertainers. Entertainment is a road to fantasy. False, you get caught up in your, your false illusion of the people praising you and clapping and, oh, you're so great, uh, you're wonderful, uh, blah, blah, blah. Some of us, you don't have to sing and dance. Some of us, we talk pretty. We're charismatic on tape. And you get caught up in that. And you and you begin to think you're more than what you really are. It's entertainment. Again, 
Your struggle is not entertainment. It's serious business. It's life or death. And you wonder why you have not progressed. You wonder why you're not really moving. You're pretending. You're pretending to move. And that's good enough for you. Because when you really move, there's a consequence and there's nothing entertaining about it. Walking out your house like Mega Evers and getting shot down in your driveway ain't nothing entertaining. I want to nominate Mega Evers for a Sarnet Award. He got shot down in his driveway fighting for uh, black rights. It don't even sound right together. It's demeaning. It's disgusting to me. And all those who participate in these activities... If you notice, none of them have suffered like that. Because if you really suffered, if you went to jail and spent some time in prison, or if you got your head bashed in by these racist ass pigs, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry for the little children. I'm sorry, little children, because I like little children to listen to me. But uh, if they suffered anything like that, then you would know, you would feel as I do. There's nothing entertaining about it. Don't demean my struggle. Don't demean me. Diminish what I'm doing here. There's nothing entertainment about liberation. There's nothing about clapping your hand. When I clap my hands, when I stomp my feet, it's in celebration that I finally overcome my enemy. Otherwise, why are you celebrating? Giving a war for what? What are you celebrating? You ain't did a damn thing. You're still living in the house of your oppressor. But the only thing on your mind, how much money I'm going to make off these fools. That's what it is. That's why they don't like Angel Snub Number 7. Because it's about them. It's not about the struggle. It's not about you. It's about taking advantage of you. Because really deep down in your heart, you do want to see a change. But you don't want to do the work. You don't want to do the sacrifice. You don't want to be in a position of Malcolm where you might stand, be standing somewhere and somebody shoot you down. Or standing on the balcony in Memphis, Tennessee and get shot through the neck. You don't want no, you don't, you don't want no part of that kind of action. You don't want to go to jail for the rest of your life. Fighting for your liberation for what is in the best interest of your children. So this is why I ask us who are real. Because ain't nothing real about getting a war and entertainment. But if you're real, you need to get on this soul train. Get on board. Toot -toot, toot -toot, and take control of a state. Because all that stuff that y'all into... It's not going to go nowhere. It's not going to do anything for you. Nothing. But you encourage yourself. You inspire our people to take control of this state. You just have no idea what you can accomplish. You can become the greatest generation ever produced. And instead of giving awards out, woo, man, you will be given a reward. And Malcolm and Marcus Garvey and Harriet Tubman and Sojourner Truth and all our freedom fighters of the past and present and yourself. When you get that shot of positivity in your veins, woo! That's just the beginning. You're unstoppable. But you gotta stop thinking on such a low level. Entertainment. You gotta stop thinking like this. It's not, it's not going nowhere. You've been doing it. And you got to get real. That's why you don't like hanging around me. Because I want us to be real. Brother told me it's only two people in this world. Real or fake. There's a TV show, now correct me if I'm wrong, but there's a TV show where you have you have the rapper Snoop Dogg, 
you know, the the, 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 the gin and juice guy, you know, the this this hardcore Compton, whatever he's supposed to be, that's what I thought Snoop Dogg was supposed to be, supposed to represent. And he has a cooking show with 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 Martha Stewart, the old Caucasian pink chick that does crafts and she cooks and a variety of things in the house. I'm checking this out. I'm like, what the? You know, Snoop Dogg and Martha Stewart. Right. Right. And y'all Negroes, y'all black woman, soul sister hate Negroes. You don't have a problem with that. And you wonder why the sisters are upset with black or soul brother manhood. Now, Snoop Dogg, if he wanted to do this, which I don't see how his image and cooking and all that stuff, I don't see how they relate. But if you want to do this, how come Snoop Dogg could not find a soul sister to team up with? This He has to team up with this Caucasian woman. See, look. See. <laughs> they think that's cute. Martha Stewart with this rapper. That's cute. And everybody applauds how great it is. Because Snoop Dogg is a man. He's a black man. He's a soul brother. But he's teamed up with this Caucasian old woman. And, uh, and don't think, see, Martha Stewart came from a time period, just like that other woman. What was her name? I forgot what her, it's another Caucasian lady. She got in trouble because somebody, uh, it was either written or they heard her say, I forgot how it actually went. It was another Caucasian lady. What was that woman's name? But anyway, she was caught saying or heard saying the word nigga. Now, if you think that Martha Stewart never called a black person, a soul brother or sister, a nigger, you really live, you really live in fantasy land because Martha Stewart would no doubt come from a time period where nigger was just the norm. When she was a child, when people was making reference to dark skinned people in this nation, they said nigger, colored, negro, and just recently black and African American. It was colored, negro, all that type of thing. And here she is, teamed up with Snoop Doggy Dog. <laughs> oh, how sick. We are just some sick puppies. He's a, he's a sick dog. He's a sick puppy. Because you think that's cute. I remember back in the 80s, they had a Caucasian old woman. She was the rapping granny. I think she was, uh, I think she was Caucasian. But I do know they have Caucasian people. You know, they rap and whatever. They think that's cute, making mockery of us. I heard, I hear Caucasian people trying to talk what they call Ebonics. You coming to my crib? That's cute. They make movies where Caucasian people. What was that? Uh, had a movie with uh, Richard Pryor and that Gene Wilder guy. He dressed up supposed to be a black man, supposed to be a, a soul brother. He ran around, and they all and they think that's funny. See, if we was on. On, a, on an even playing field, it might be a little hilarious. But when you have dogged somebody out for the last 400 years, when you have raped them, robbed them, lied to them, steal, lynched, and the list goes on and on, it ain't funny playing around with the people that have done these things. I don't see nothing funny and cute about it. And Caucasian people do this because this idiot Snoop Dogg is no threat. Now let, let Snoop Dogg think about taking over the state of Mississippi. I can guarantee you, Martha Stewart and a lot of those, these Caucasian people that they clapping their hand. What if Snoop Dogg came and said, I'm joining the campaign. We want to take control of the state of Mississippi. I guarantee you their whole thinking process would change. Would you want to do something like that for Snoop? Their whole attitude going to change. Because you're acting like a child. You're acting like a clown. And ain't nobody going to 
respect nobody that's serious respects a clown unless you're looking to be entertained. So they are looking to be entertained. Snoop Dogg cooking a pot roast with Martha Stewart. They're looking to be entertained. But the whole attitude, the whole behavior begins to change if Snoop Dogg want to begin to take, take all the people out of Compton and move them to the state of Mississippi. Then what are you, what are you doing, Snoop? Something, something is wrong with Snoop. And why are you snooping around trying to find out everything you can about Mississippi and politics and the law and how we do things in this land? Why don't you just sit your nigger ass down, get in the damn kitchen with Martha Stewart, shut your mouth, get this crazy idea out of your head, Snoopy, before we really do a Charlie Brown on your ass. Woo, Negroes. These Negroes, I don't understand them. First they love ya. First they love you, then they flip like a rabbit dog. <laughs> That's the way they will look at you as long as you're a non-threat. The soul brother in this nation, we are non-threats. So basically anybody can say whatever they want about us and do anything they want to us. They don't have to worry about retaliation. They don't have to worry about a punishment or a consequence. And you wonder why soul sisters are upset with you. We are not behaving and we're not responding and we're not standing up. We're not putting an image of strong manhood. We continue to put this image that we're a bunch of chumps and a bunch of clowns. I don't like that because whether or not whether I like it or not, I can't change my gender. I can't change what I am. And y'all are embarrassing the hell out of me because I'm not like that at all. I'm not going to be your clown. I'm not going to sit around and do something so the children of those who, have, who treated my ancestors with such terror so they can feel comfortable and giggle and smile and be entertained. I don't find Snoop Dogg and Martha Stewart together. There's nothing entertaining about it. It's good for her. Oh, Martha Stewart. She's doing something out of the ordinary. She, team, she teams up with the rapper, rapper Snoop Dogg. Who, who would ever have thought and here, this this is a man, supposed to be a man. Here you are, you got this grown man with boys, and they're looking at their father. What is going on in the mind of these young boys? And you wonder why our young boys is their wrist is starting to they starting to because they don't have strong images. They don't have strong images to look at. Unlike Caucasian boys, they have a lot of strong role models in their lives. Matter of fact, they know that they control and run this country. They know this. What do we have? What do we have? My sister Terry says she got a man. I'm looking for a man too. I'm looking for a man to join me. So she will see that the man she got ain't what she thinks she has. Because I can guarantee you, he's, he's a, she got a man, but what kind of man do you have? I want to put you in your own house. I want to build your car. I want to grow your food. I want to teach our children. These so-called men, they don't stand for that. I'm not going to team up with some Caucasian woman to sing a song and I can sing with these first. Matter of fact, I will only sing with these, period. I'm not interested in nobody else's woman. I'm not looking, I'm not trying and do not want to be, and I'm not going to be your clown. That's why many of them 
will stay away from me. I had a guest last Sunday, the common sense guy. And he was talking about, and he made it very clear. He likes those kind of people like Snoop Dogg. He said, what are you? You upset with the people you call Uncle Tom? Because the Uncle Tom, the Sambo, these are the names that we call them, y'all call them, traitors really, to their race, actually, for a few pieces of silver, smiling, sniggling, and grinning. For what? I would rather these, I would rather these sisters here, I would rather, I don't mind for them to smile. I don't mind entertaining them. That's my woman. That's who I love. I want to be with her. I want her happy. I don't want to make my enemies happy. When they wake up every morning, I want them to know of the terror they have gave my ancestors and myself for the last 400 years. I'm going to continue to remind you of your evil. They want to, they want you to sit around. It's a long time ago. Let's forget. That's nice. If you've done something for me to make me try to forget. But when you see our people lynched in 2018, our people are still being lynched mysteriously. They commit suicide suddenly and mysteriously. We're still going to jail. We're still being shot down in the streets. We're still being discriminated. All these things continue to happen. To happen. How the hell can I be happy? And why should we live here and allow them to be happy like nothing's going on, like nothing's wrong. When I was locked up, every day I reminded them, "Woo, gotta watch my language, cause I want, I want the, I want the little children to listen to me." <laughs> when I was locked up, I reminded them, them devils every day, what they are doing to me and what they are doing to others. Evil, wicked people. There was a Caucasian person, and he was saying, I think he's in jail now. They got him on something. But he said, if you want to really understand Caucasian people and what they do, this is a Caucasian man. What was his name? Peter Trudeau. I think that's what his name was. Anyway, he said, follow the money. Caucasian people love the money. Follow the money. They are materialistic and physical. That's what it's all about. Arrogant. Keep you in this childlike slave condition so they can feel good about themselves. And so Snoop Dogg don't mind them laughing at him because he's a child. And a young child, a young girl, and a young boy don't know what it means to be a man or a woman. He does not know what it means to be a man or a woman because if he did, he would not be sitting up on national TV in the public view, running around here sniggling and grinning and teamed up with some Caucasian woman that don't give a damn about you. <laughs> oh man, I am so sorry. Oh uh, wow. Um just I just want to talk, that's all. Um never mind. I have to laugh because these these you have brothers and sisters, and I know, I know, I know, I know. You have brothers and sisters who they love they really believe this African transatlantic slave trade story. And if you reject that story, they go ballistic. I've never seen nothing like this. I've never seen nothing like this. It reminds me back in the day, and they probably still do it, when Christians, if you don't believe in Jesus, they go wacky. They go crazy. You're going to hell, and you're going to be damned forever, and just... I don't want nothing to do with you. They just go, they just go ballistic. And I see the same thing in these brothers and sisters who believe 
in the transatlantic slave trade that the dark skinned people, the descendants of slaves born in America, having dark skin, they believe. They never tell you they know. They all, just like religion, just like Christianity, they say, they always ask you, you don't believe you're an African? Why they don't say, don't you know you're an African? They say, why you don't believe you're an African? You have to say that you believe in an African because it's questionable. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm just like everybody else. I was raised on Roots and Kuta Kente, and we was taught in school that we were African. We were shipped on boats and all like this. But when you use common sense, when you use, when you use mathematics itself, something about that whole story, uh, don't sound right. I might do a Google Hangout this weekend or during the, the holiday weekend on this, on this topic. I really don't like messing with it no more because it just don't make sense. Nobody is bringing me information to back up their claims that the so-called Negro, in fact, they just ignore the fact that the Caucasian people, they call the native people Negro first. Then they gave the name to us. Is that a coincidence or are we the same people? Huh? Huh? Now look. We are Africans. What? They never tell you what Africans we are. But they, they do say, or they try to narrow it down to West Africans. And when it comes to me, and see, this is, this is the thing about it. I do not say that we don't have uh, what is called, you know, African blood, the people from the continent. I'm not, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that the vast majority of us and the original breeding stock of what is called the Negro, the colored people, the black people in this nation, the original breeding stock, the majority of our bloodline is Native American. They was already here. Dark-skinned people was already here, just as dark-skinned as I am or any other African. The only difference that I see is that the Native people was dark-skinned, but they had a red hue to their skin color. When you look at most of, many of this, the uh, African people, the people on the African continent, they have a more blue, more blue hue to their dark skin color. And when you look at the so-called Negro, many of us, even myself, when you put us in the, our dark skin in the light, it's not blue, it's always brownish red. Thus, the name the red man. You dark skin, but you got that red hinge color to your darkness. Thus the name the red man. They call the native people the red man. So there are some when they look at me, they say, Oh, you you look like a one of those Africans. They again they never specify. I have a video and y'all need to look it up. I I will probably put it into my Description box and future videos that I made. The video that I made is called How the White Man Created Black People. And when you look at the process of what happened, then you understand everything. I look like some African. Let me tell you something. Some people like peaches. Some people like peaches. They go to the store and they grab something that looked like a peach. But it's not. It turns out to be a nectarine. A nectarine is a, is a hybrid fruit. It's a combination of, of a plum and a peach. But it looks more like a, a peach. And you grab the nectarine thinking that it is a peach. Makes no difference what I look like. I am not an African. I am not them. No matter what I look like. And then when you look at 
the so-called African American in general, what African people, what 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 West Africans do we look like? Which would which would almost be impossible because the so-called Negro, the black man in America, soul brothers and sisters in this nation, we come in various hues. We have different features. Some of us have large noses, some of us have have broad broad noses and uh, narrow noses, big lips, small lips. Some of us actually do have naturally straight like hair. We come in all kinds of varieties. If you was an African, then you would be similar to those to some West African, and we don't look nothing like them. Plus, what is your standard of purity? Whatever, whatever African you claiming us to be, that means we also, that means we also qualify under that standard of purity. What makes that means we are we are pure and we're not pure. When we are a people that is a mixture of various dark skinned people, including the Caucasian people themselves, and over a, a period of time we have evolved into a a people unto ourselves, just like the nectarine. The nectarine is not a peach. The nectarine is not a plum. The so-called Negro is not an African. The so-called Negro is not a Native American either. So I make both people get upset. They like for me to talk about we're not African. Then I tell them you're not a Native American either. They get upset. Makes no difference how you get upset. Makes no difference what you feel like. That's the reality of it. And that's your problem. You can't accept things just the way they are. So you need to learn how to know yourself, love yourself, understand what we become. And the name that we gave ourselves was soul brothers and sisters. And we work from that. We begin to build and create our own identity. I don't need something somebody else got. I don't need something. I don't need somebody else leftovers. I don't need your religion. I don't need your language. We have shown that we are capable of doing all this ourselves because we have become a people unto ourselves. And guess what? I'm like El DeBarge. Ooh, and I like it. Y'all don't like it and you're having problems trying to be somebody that you're not. I'm perfectly happy being the so-called Negro that I am. In fact, like I said, I reject that. I am a soul brother. You are soul sisters. And now it's time for us to go on our own and do our own thing and get on the soul train. Let's take over. Let's take control of the state of Mississippi. And I guarantee you, we will change reality, the reality of things, just by changing our destiny, by just being who we are. You are not followers. You have done that for 400 years. You have not come to you have not come into your own and you are a leader and the rest of the world is waiting on you if you get yourself together. You just don't know who you are because you're trying to be somebody else. you trying to follow somebody else when they should be following you. Jot down your comment. Let's talk about it. I'll catch y'all later on the flip-flop. Peace! Okay, I just, just talking, I just have a, a quick observation I would like to share with you. That's that's all. Um, Going to make this real quick. Um, just something for us to think about. You know, um, how do I want to start? Okay, Beyonce. I do, I like Beyonce. Beyonce is cool. I like Beyonce back in the day. This new Beyonce is sort of on the ratchet side, sort of on the ghetto, ghetto type side to me. I, I think, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I really, she really, um, she's, she's gotten real nasty like. And I, you know, I don't, I don't, I can't get off into that. And the music, I just don't, her new music, I just, it just don't 
do nothing for me. But the old Bob, the the old <laughs> the old Beyonce with Destiny's Child and her first solo albums, I can dig it. But this is what I want to bring to us. Now, as you know, Beyonce is sexy, right? Beyonce is sexy. And she wore these little cut-off shorts and different dresses and leotards and, and, and whatever. And you have these perverts when Beyonce is live, when she's doing her concerts. And if you do an internet search, unfortunately, by mistake, I saw some of this stuff. I really wasn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I, I wasn't looking for it, but I, I saw some of this crap. There are perverts with these long lenses, and when she's performing, Beyonce is already half naked, right? So they take in these lenses, and they probably do this to regular sisters and, and, and women in general. They take these cameras, and they try to shoot between the women's legs, down their breasts, and between their legs. They take these cameras. That's why some of y'all ladies, you, you really need to dress more you, you, you got to dress more decent. You got perverts, and now all you got these different kinds of cameras and and different ways of of, of shooting folks. And uh, when you dress properly, you know if the if the skirt is long enough, and and you know you dress properly, you don't have to worry about all that. But when you got all this out, you know I really don't understand. You know, for me, in the United States. Why don't if just let people run around naked if they want to? So what? Who cares? But uh, you know you got to hide just a little taste. I don't. I guess that's a tease. I don't. I don't know what it is. But you have these perverts when Beyonce is performing, they taking the camera and they shooting all between her legs, and then they blow the picture up so they can try to see her, you know, her goodies and, and things of this nature. But Beyonce. Is giving them this opportunity because she's sexy. I'm an entertainer. This is this is sexy. Bending over, showing your anus and your goodies to every to the world. That's sexy, right? Okay, right. That's sexy. Okay, y'all y'all got it. That's sexy. However, and some of you guys, some of you men, and even some of you women, because. I'm pretty sure they also do this to females also. But when you go to jail, when you go to prison, and they give you a body search, a lot of times, me, myself, even, even in my situation, I never experienced this. Not that I remember. I, I don't remember. Maybe I did. Maybe I'm suffering from trauma and trying to block it out. But from my experience, I, I don't remember. But I do know when you go to jail, go to prison, they make you, they do, they do a body search, you take all your clothes off, then they make you bend over and show you your goodies. And they actually will reach into your anus to make sure that you don't, you're not hiding anything. So my question is, and, and you know, and you, and, uh, you feel humiliated. That's a humiliating thing. I remember when Michael Jackson, you know, he went through his uh, trial. He went through all that crap being charged with uh, um, messing around with a minor, being a pedophile. And they made him strip because they needed to see certain marks. The, the, the so-called victim claimed that he saw Michael Jackson's penis and Michael had to strip down and they, they took pictures of his of his goodies. That's a humiliating thing. It's humiliating. I remember back in the day when I was growing up, when people had shame, there's a thing called shame. Matter of fact, see, that's why I really like Terry Ellis. Because Terry Ellis always carried herself. She was always, when she could, dress like a lady. She didn't have her, always have her goodies all out. I love you, Terry. Terry, um, that's what I like about Terry Ellis. If back in the day, when my sock fell down, I felt shame. 
So here you are in jail, in prison, and you are being made, you're being forced to show your butt cheeks, show your goodies to the public. You feel humiliation and shame and anger. And you look at yourself like, wow. But now, see, my question is, why is that humiliating? Or you don't have to go to jail or prison. You have people, if you get in a fight with them, they'll pull your clothes down and things of this nature, show your goodies to the public, and you feel shame. You, I mean, uh, the feeling is mm, almost indescribable. You do not feel good. So I guess you, you see where I'm coming from with this or where I'm going with this. Why is Beyonce, who voluntarily showing her backside, giving people opportunity to try to take pictures of her goodies and her anus or whatever, why is that sexy? But at the same time, if you put that, if you go to jail and do the same thing, how come that's not sexy? How come you don't feel good about that? Beyonce, I'm an entertainer, I'm feeling sexy, show your butt crack. To the world, why is the same action sexy for one person and it's humiliating to another? It's either one or the other. It can't be both. And Beyonce is showing her goodies to thousands and millions of people. Here you are. You don't feel sexy when you're bending over for a police officer to look between up, up, up in your anus. Why you don't feel sexy like Beyonce? If it's a sexy feeling, then how come? Why Beyonce don't feel humiliated? How come Beyonce don't feel any shame? That's what I, that's 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 what's been bothering me. That's what's been bothering me. That's what I that's what I want to bring to our attention. What's up with that? Jot down your comments, y'all. Let's talk about it. I didn't have nothing else better to do. That was on my mind. And uh, yeah, y'all have a nice day. And remember, and remember, there is no solution, no other activity, no other solution to the problem of the so-called Negro right now. Our best bet is to take control of a state. Take control of Mississippi. Get on board. I'm going to say this over and over again. Until you get on board. Because I'm telling you. Your children will thank you for it. Get on board. The Soul Train. I'm Angel Snub Number 7. This is the Reality Tip on Earth. Peace. And I'm Ari 5000. I want to start my own. The brother got on my website today and said, we need a Pan-African channel. I totally agree. I was working on starting my own uh, video streaming page where you can just load all your videos up there. Of no, no time, no censorship. Because if you notice on my website now, it's limited to 100 megabytes. Due to the servers, due to the carrier, the videos can only be no more than 100 megabytes. I'm tired of YouTube. Too many times they're destroying our pages. They don't want to see this movement grow on YouTube. You see some of my videos and you look you look at them and they like got 10 views, 20 views. That's not because and then they people will look at that and they'll make them think, oh, they're, he's, he's not getting the views. No, I have so many YouTube pages destroyed that they don't want to see me effectively and successfully build up this momentum and stream of people watching my videos. I'm just as big as the bigger people on YouTube but you cannot see it because they make it that way by constantly destroying my pages to destroy the momentum that I am building up on YouTube. So it's not going to work on YouTube. You you all see how long I've been on YouTube. No one has been more resilient, pushing more harder on YouTube than I have. I, I, I must add, Brother um, Angel Snubnub7, Brother uh, Talik Even Ra, many of you all have not heard of him, and it's a reason for that, that you haven't heard of 
brothers like that who's coming with a profound message. Every day this brother does like an hour of dissertation on YouTube, but no one's hearing him. His message is not getting out. Powerful message, more powerful than most messages that are out there. Very real, very radical, very sincere, very diligent, very consistent, and very little hypocrisy in what he speaks. At least he's true and sincere about what he's talking about. He's not doing it for money, selling no projects, trying to selling no products, trying to do lectures. He's actually coming on there, offering some critical thought and critical analysis every day consistently, but most people have not heard of him. Not because he's lazy. I see him. He got thousands of YouTube pages. I see him constantly putting out videos, but you haven't heard of him. That's by design. That's, that's, that's by design of white supremacy. That's because you all want to hear the popular message and not the real and raw message. And YouTube makes sure of that. They make sure that they can stomp, constantly stomp out your Messiah. They let, they, they, they let the Messiah get further enough just for you to hear who the Messiahs are. And as soon as you hear them, bam, they cut off, bam, job well done. So we have to create our own sites. 